The hooks today we're going to be using the HG 1280 size 8 2x long dry fly hooks as well as Danville's wax nylon cord. I like a heavier thread just because when you're really cranking down the foam it seems to help cinch it down really good. First up, wrap the cord or thread a quarter of the way down the hook shank. Doesn't matter about these wraps because it's all going to be covered up anyways. that up. Second step we're going to be using copper medium hollow tinsel. I like to add it on just a little bit of flash. I never like to leave a bare hook shank. You're going to wrap it all the way to the front. It's just a little something. Flashy flashy helps get the fish attention. Don't have to make it real neat or real precise because you're going to be laying foam over this and it will cover most of it up. Right, tie that off. Next up we're going to be tying in Rainy's 2mm dark green foam. This pattern can be made in a variety of colors, but one of my favorites is dark green and brown. I like to twist the thread a little bit just to help it dig into the foam. Straighten out the head there. Next step is going to be adding the rubber legs. A real simple way to add these in is take your legs, fold them over, Lay them right on top. Make a couple of loose wraps around so you can still move the legs inside. Clip it once right here and just slide these rubber legs down to the side. That way you don't have to worry about all the rubber legs being different lengths. Once you slide them down they're pretty much set in place. The next step we're going to be tying in a little bit of a wing on the back of the hopper here. First you're just going to wrap the thread back, one wrap, right till about you've got a quarter of the hook shank left before the bend. Do a couple nice wraps there just to get it secured down. We're going to be using brown tan EP fibers right here. I'm just going to tie them on just right on top of this foam. Don't use too big of a bunch of the EP fibers, otherwise they'll be sticking out the side of your hopper and it'll just get a little messy looking. Clip off the excess. Cinch it down one more time and you should be good. Alright, for the last step here, we're going to be tying on the last piece of foam up top. Do a couple good thread wraps just to secure it down real nice and tight. And then I like to wrap it under, under the brown piece of foam and over the green one. Cinch that guy down. And the last step here, and a little piece of yellow foam just as an indicator, just so you can see it really clearly on those hard to see days. When you're tying this down, I like to pull up on the foam. It makes it stand up a little more. More like a post. Clip the excess off. And the last couple steps are just cutting the foam how you want it. You can leave it squared. I like to add a little bit of 
angles in my hoppers just to make it look a little more realistic. To finish off the hopper here, I like to tie it off right on the bare hook shank up front. Seems that if you tie it off around the rubber legs, it'll pull them weird ways and make them sit weird. So I'll just do a couple wraps up here. Just have a whip finish. Cinch it down. Two of those should do. On all my foam patterns, I like to give it a good, good covering of Zappa Gap just because foam tends to move around a little bit no matter how much you cinch it down. The brush applicator is real nice because you can just paint it on and I'll cover the whole underside of it. Good thick coating because in the summertime when the fish are hitting hoppers, these guys tend to get pretty beat up. This hopper is a lot of fun to fish. As you saw, it's real simple to tie, and it can be fished anywhere from Wisconsin all the way out to Montana and beyond. It works great for trout, panfish, bass, nearly indestructible, and floats higher than anything else.